Hello everyone, Kurt Holford here, and welcome back to another episode from Holfeder Labs. Today we continue on with the scabbarded sword against the dagger, and we are looking at the last two plays, um, I'm sorry, hand positions that we see within the manuscript of the Getty that contend with when the sword is on a lower position and whether your hand is over or your hand is in, I would say, like a dagger grip, if you will. Um, these positions right here are, um, they have different outcomes in which he describes to do. However, it is my personal belief that regardless of how your hand is, both of these you're able to achieve in some form or fashion here in a similar in a similar output. Uh, but before we get too far into that, we're going to take a look here as far as the mechanics of this and some of the theory about that that make this play possible. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is going to be the last of the scabbard against the dagger plays, which we see in Armazari. And once again, these plays right here, I think are fantastic. Because one of the things about all of these scabbarded sword plays, if you know about sword manual right here, this is just another variant of the Posta Serpentina. This right here is just another form of the Vera Croce. This right here is another form of essentially, and we'll understand this later on, the axe grip. All these things right here are key components, and therefore, in my mentality, if I have any of these types of grips when I have this, I am thinking of ways of how those plays of sword may carry over into this. So, the three images we're talking about here, I'm going to put them across the screen here, they all deal with the sword that is now down on the ground. It's almost like in a cane position, right? It's in the scabbard, it's not like here on the ground, and the first two images, as you just saw, I have my hand in some form or fashion right here. Now, I can't really tell, and personally, I don't think it really matters. I don't think it matters at all. But again, why would a My Sword Arms teach somebody variances of what you can do when your hand is in different spots? Because you might be lazy. You might be like this one day. Because standing like this is, is it's a lot. So you might be like this one day. You might just be standing here like this. Or you might be like this. Or maybe it's on the side here and I can reach over and create these things. So there's different ways of grabbing this stuff here that kind of give us contextual concept about, again, it kind of sucks to be on watch or having to do certain things right here. There's things to consider beyond just what the fencing theory is about. So we might get a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. With that all being the case, what do we do here? The first play talks about how he slams the scabbard up and over. The image looks like this. And as he, and he says, as he strikes, I'm gonna strike, I'm gonna bring my scabbard up and over your arm and strike and, and draw my sword and strike you with the sword. Before we demonstrate that, I'm gonna show you the motions of this very slowly of what I think he is saying right here. And I can say once again, from our curriculum, that I, it works, it is nasty, and we don't have a lot of protective stuff right here because once again, the elbow or the arm are all places to shut down, right? So as the person comes into this right here, again, I can pass backwards. It's about, it's this motion. We're not doing up and over. We're going the scabbard over, turning through, and now I can strike. Okay, so real slow with that so we can see this right here. So here, in this position, striking up. So just turn. That's the dagger shot here. I'm turning this over this way, and then as I step back, the scabbard is now over the arm. I can draw and I can stick. Why would I cut? It makes no sense when I can do this right here. Not to mention, if I have to cut, then I have to move my body, which takes away pressure. We'll talk about that here in a second when we demonstrate this very slow. Um, so with that being the case here, again, he grabs in, he has hold of me, he starts to bring the dagger hand up. As he does, I smack, and that might be smack, up and over, and it's right here. And now I have all these things right here. If I turn, I'm giving up motion right here. Not that it's not gonna hit him, but why not just stick him in the face, stick him right here? Done deal. I'm not trying to make this a big flourish. I'm trying to put down someone who just attacked me. Nice and slow. One, smack. Two, turn. Scabbard over top. Keep that pressure. Draw. Stick where you will. And again, we're sitting in this position right here. This is a spot we are going to see continually within the sword section. Why do I think that's important? Again, if this person might be, he may have to have some kind of mail under his, under a jacket. He might have a breastplate that's hidden. He might have all sorts of things that are hidden. The thing that we don't know here is what he has. Why would I want to put the sword up here? 
into a spot that's more likely to get the point in. There's the neck area right here. If this is a gorget right here, which I'm saying no gorget, but if you have like something here that covers me up this way, I want to put the sword in the softest bits possible to get the job done. And if I miss, so again, what's the anatomy of it all? Sword comes, grabs in here, it pops right up here, boom, cross, over top of the sword here. I pop this right here. If he retracts on me this right here, I hit him in the neck. If I if I if he if he if he turns away from me, like away from the blow, so I come right here, he turns into this. Well now I have all these other things where I can come across. Probably they ditching this. I'm just lazy right now. I don't want to pick it up from the damn ground. And now I have this right here because I'm trapping his arm across and I have his throat. Or the groin area. Remember the clothing of the time right here? It may be it may, you might have split hose. So again, it comes across right here and up over, boom, over top down. I hit him with the scabbard right in the groin, and then I hit him right here. That might be the other thing. Remember, knowing your effective strikes makes this play right here, hey, I get to be a little bit of Bob Ross, like, this is your world. Put a little happy little Fendente in there like this. Understand that portion right there. See, there can be all sorts of things that happen with this. Because just by hitting something, going boom, right to the groin as hard as I can, and then dropping down, my sword is up here now, now I can't cut off his head. Something like this. And grab up, shoot, come down here, right to the groin, pop right through, and I'm across this way. Again, big motion. Why would I want to do that? But again, it's there. Remember, the mind of fight, the mind of fight that happens in those moments is based off your training and based off the situation and based upon your own adrenaline and fear drives. So what happens there? So those are things. He just says strike. He doesn't say do things right here. He says strike. And those are big factors to talk about. The second play that we're going to talk about here, again, from what I can tell, is the sword is like this. My hand is, I, I basically have my thumbs aligned towards the pummel. And we create a similar situation where, once again, the person has grabbed in. This is incredibly dangerous, and I love every second of it all, but it is a leverage thing right here that, once again, gives us indication of, I want to use two hands on one to create the vector into the center line that I'm choosing. So as he comes and he grabs, in this case right here, Fiore tells us to go under the arms, right? And this is what the image shows up right here, right? Boom. So once again, stepping off of this, from here, I think it's popping up, stepping back. Up, stepping back. So you can see in the front line here what my sword is doing. So I'm going, I'm popping up, because that's the cover, under his arm, and I'm stepping back. By turning this, I'm not actually, all I'm using here is the concept Previous videos, Mezzavolt. If I step, if I pass back, my arms don't change. But instead, I half turn back. You'll notice here, this stays in place. The only reason why is not because of my arm, it's because my hips are rotating. Arms in place, open. Arms in place, open. Of course, it's probably me muscling everything else. It's a stressful situation, but you train for structure. So with that being the case here, again, here, I'm in a position up, step back, I can pop this out. We're gonna be very careful with this because again, once again, it's become striking points and everything else. And by the way, for those that notice here, what am I in? The archer's guard. So what are we doing right here? We are probably deploying to get this thing into action in one form or fashion right here. I come in here, I go to the spot in one of mine, right? By coming up here here, I'm in the same kind of concept, but I'm high. I can go, I can ditch this, and go to a high sword, I can go to a half sword, right? All these are different options right here. They're just ways to be able to deploy and to flow out of this. And as we go into the six dissimilar guards, we'll go back and revisit some of these things. So again, I'm here, he grabs me. Ah, oh, yes, my good man. As he comes up with this right here, I'm gonna come up under his arm. My arm, my body is not gonna move in depth because he is stepping in at me. I'm gonna go with him. That's the notion. You can already tell, and then that's right through which allows me to hit him on this. As his body, so again, as his body is going this way, my body is going this way, which means we have a vacuum in that direction. That's the big part about this. In, grab, up, right there. So his bolt is not delayed, and we are now once again into that mirrored structure. If I was opposing, now the vacuum's here still in the center. The pressure against is the pressure against. 
up, under, over, back in. Drop my keyboard backwards. Up, under, here. Roll and shift the energy out behind me. Put the, and I'm aiming specifically, I don't want to actually hit Connor in the face. Off the side right here, and now I have the ability to draw into this face right here, and I can use this portion right here, by the way, kind of like a dagger. So, in those cases, we have options to be able to do that. And again, that takes a thing. So what I'm doing right here is that last image. People will see the image right here, the guy's hand up like this, right? As we can see right here. All that right there is, again, how we get to that space. So there's no real good way for me to be able to demonstrate this in present time right here. All you can tell here is that in this position, he's coming in this way. Pass comes this way. I go with it, and I let that energy go out this way. Up under the arm, turn, cross. I'm hitting his elbow, which may not be a safe bet. A safer bet might be at the dagger. As he comes up, here. That's even worse if you're even closer to him on those things. And again, you can see as he always goes. Okay? Is there a right answer? I don't think the Maestro would say so. But what I would say is in this case right here, what is he looking at? He understands. But this is a person on that side that's going to be striking from a certain area that we have to contend with in different power vectors. So that's going to conclude right here. That is the scabbarded section of the sword. So the scabbarded sword against dagger plays, which in my opinion are very interesting. They're very fun. And they become very connected in so many different ways. Because the thing right here is, as this thing starts to become more kinetic, maybe he comes in, I smack his arm, but he retracts his arm, and I have to move into a certain play. The point right here is you have things right here. You're trying to deploy your arms against somebody. And we'll talk all about that in the, very, in, in, in the, in the, in the videos to come in the future. Uh, these, these plays right here are simple. They're easy. They're not meant to be for show. They're meant to be for killing, in my opinion. They're meant for fucking turning something back at somebody and say, you want some of this? I'll give you some of this. And those right there go hand in hand to just kind of know what they have for them. So you can see with the video, again, there are... The two ways in which the grabbing, the grabbing of the sword might be um, is, is a big focal point in which we're trying to explore here within this portion of the study. Um, a big part that I think is necessary to speak about within this specifically is how you grip, um, it could be circumstantial, and how you grip the sword in uh, some of the most, you know, in a, in a situation that is a higher, you know, of high, higher intensity is another, is, is completely based upon luck situation, where are you tracking on and what may be the last thing that's on your mind that you, when you receive an attack against somebody. Um, this is all very important to kind of keep into context here, which is why I believe that Fiori is showing two ways in which you can achieve, I think, two different plays. Um, in, in practicing and drilling this right here, uh, we have found that you can do both of those kind of concepts coming up and over and to strike somebody in the same kind of fashion here. It's just a matter of how you grip. Now, a big question has come into mind with some of the classes that have been out there is why would there be two grips? Why, why have two grips? Why have two plays? Why, why any of this? And to me, personally, what I think it is, is it boils down to you are talking about, you know, when you're walking around and carrying a sword uh, in, this, in this time period, it may have had very, very specific functionalities to it. You may have had, you know, it may have been a status thing. We don't, we don't know all the details as far as like why would carrying be the case here especially when in some places you couldn't do it that way. You couldn't carry a sword or you couldn't even wear a sword. Or you might be carrying the sword of somebody else. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that kind of go with that. With that being the case, um, you, when something happens in an immediate action that is from a state of you know, secured to a place of, you know, to a state of being activated, actuated, um, there are different headspaces that come into place that allow for all that to kind of come into reality. I don't think that Fiori is saying, if you do this right here, then do this play. If you do this right here, then do this play. Again, my belief is that he is looking at this right here and showing you essentially two ways. If you, if, you know, there's, you can either grab the sword this way or this way. And that could be based upon many different factors out there that we may not be considering today. Um, it's not a choice of like, okay, I see this guy coming here. I'm going to do it this way. It could just be, I grabbed wrong, and I have to respond with this. But again, just because you grab it a certain way here doesn't mean you go to one play. It just means that you have two ways in which you can do this. And it is my personal belief that that is a possibility uh, for this kind of work. 
Um, <clears throat> so ultimately, right there, that's the big thing that kind of is the big takeaway in regards to all those positions is that it doesn't necessarily matter. Like you're not trying to make one, you're not trying to grab one way to do it to to do one play or to take one action. It's these are options that can happen here that you've can train into the body, and that in a moment of stress, things may come out into a different kind of form or fashion. Um, so again, that's that's going to do it for the video here. Again, it's, it's not very complicated. It's 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 short and sweet. However, um, in, in how simple that it is, it's not easy because ultimately, right here, when you are dealing with someone that's attacking you, there are things that you may have to consider in a different way that create different forms and factions that you you may not be aware of at the time. So I personally think that this kind of play right here is a way to kind of look at that. And again, that's that's all that it really is. So again, I, I'm going to turn it over to you, dear viewers, whether you're new or uh, you're one of the subscribers. What are your thoughts on this right here? Have you practiced this right here? Um, I don't know. I, I don't get to talk to too many people about this, right? But I don't know how many different curriculums or groups out there practice these types of things or, or if they see the purpose in them or practicing with them or working with them and so on and so forth. Um, these are not fencing terms. These are what I would call or I knew in the Marine Corps as immediate actions. They're responses to something that have to take place in something immediately and therefore you have to deploy rather quickly. So um, curious what your thoughts are on there. Are you practicing or are you not? Leave a comment below out there. If you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, share with a friend. Don't forget, hit the bell. That way you know when new content's being dropped there. Uh, if you are new, if you are one of my subscribers and uh, viewers, thank you so much as always for viewing here, for leaving comments. Uh, it, it means a lot to me. It helps me figure out more about how I can tailor the, the stuff that's going here as well as, you know, maybe check my own perspective as well. So please continue to do so. And again, help me continue to grow this channel by sharing with friends. Uh, but that's going to do it for this right here. So again, as always, everybody, until I see you next time, as always, stay safe out there, train well, and fight on. I'll see you all soon.